Next, we'll explore annualizing numbers. Suppose that we have the following case data about a firm. It has daily sales of $400. And we like to figure out the annual sales generated by the firm. Using the traditional approach, we'll multiply the number of days per year by the sales per day, which is 365 times 400, producing 146,000 of annual sales. The problem with this approach is that it may lead to quite cumbersome calculations, often involving a lot of zeros. Instead, we can use two simpler alternative methods to efficiently annualize numbers. The first one is the familiar to us scientific notation method. Specifically, we'll first round 365 to 350, which is acceptable for most interviewers. Then we'll express 350 as 3.5 times 10 in second. Note that 3.5 is a calculation-friendly number because a number multiplied by 3.5 is equal to that number multiplied by 3 plus that same number divided by 2, where the n divided by 2 element is equivalent to n times 0 0.5, where the 0 0.5 corresponds to that in the original 3.5 figure. So then, we'll annualize the firm's sales as follows. 350, expressed in the scientific notation, times 400, expressed similarly. As discussed earlier, first, we must take care of the zeros. So, 10 in second times itself equals 10 in fourth. Next, we'll manage the base figures. So, 3.5 times 4 equals 14, which is computed as explained earlier. That is, 4 times 3 plus 4, divided by 2. Very simple. Now, recall from the previous tutorial section that we ideally want our exponents to be in the third, sixth, or ninth power. In contrast, our answer is in the fourth power. So, we'll transfer one zero from the exponent to the base figure in order to get a more friendly expression. 140 times 10 in the third, which equals 140,000 of annual sales. The other method to annualize numbers is called the 7 times 5 times 10 factoring. As the name implies, it involves factoring 350, the rounded number of days per year, as the product of 7, 5, and 10. So using this method, we'll annualize the firm's sales as follows. First, 400 times 7 equals 2,800. Next, 2,800 times 5 equals 14,000. And finally, 14,000 times 10 equals 140,000 of annual sales. That, of course, is the same answer as we arrived at using the scientific notation. At this point, one might ask as to why, in the factoring sequence, 7 precedes 5. The reason behind that is that 7 is not as friendly to multiply by as 5 or 10, so it makes sense to get that out of the way first before calculations get more complex. The second step is to calculate sequentially using the aligned math logic. Hence, our first sub-step 
is to compute annual volume, which we'll do from the bottom up, starting with population and adoption. So 200,000 of population times 25% of adoption results in 50,000 users. Next, 50,000 users times 5 annual units per user produces 250,000 of annual volume, thereby completing our first calculation substep. Our second substep is to calculate unit profit, also from the bottom up, starting with annual fixed cost and annual volume. So 137,500 of annual fixed cost divided by 250,000 of annual volume results in 55 cents of unit fixed cost. Next, this unit fixed cost plus 95 cents of unit variable cost results in $1.50 of total unit cost. Lastly, this unit cost subtracted from $2 of unit price results in 50 cents of unit profit, thereby completing our second calculation substep. The third substep is to multiply unit profit by annual volume. So 50 cents times 250,000 produces $125,000 of annual profit. Our fourth and final substep is to determine break even time by dividing upfront investment by annual profit. So $375,000 divided by $125,000 results in three years of break-even time, thereby answering our main question. So as you can see, by structuring our full math logic up front, we were able to complete our calculations quickly and efficiently. Additionally, in an actual case interview, we would think out loud and communicate with the interviewer continuously in order to keep him engaged throughout our calculations.